Let me see. There's a question from the very back. I got a quick question. I know um, my mom suffers from depression, but they've never been able to diagnose her with bipolar. But I, I know it. Just listening to your stories, I know that's exactly what she has. And I, I, she doesn't live around here, so I got to go visit her this weekend. And half the weekend, she didn't even want to get out of the bed. Um, and it's just so hard. And just giving her the support that we can. And it's really hard because I have a little sister who just started middle school. So it's really hard on my little sister. So she's struggling in school because she doesn't get all the support that she can from my single mom. And the biggest problem is she's had a lot of highs and lows, but she's been on a lot of different cocktail medicines too. But her problem is financially she can't afford them anymore, so she can't get the help. Is there a way that, you know, someone out there that can be able to financially help her get the medicine that we know that she needs so she won't be always going through all these down times? Um, the Community <coughs> Services Board, I think you have it, I'm from Virginia, so I apologize for not knowing all the names of your cities, but I believe it's Rappahannock Community Services Board, maybe? Fredericksburg. Ooh, okay. um, and uh, again, um, they, they do provide side scale counseling and free medications for your mom. I would say to you, perhaps, um, it's very threatening for her to go in because she's probably been medicated and it didn't work or she's tired of being under the influence of medications because of the, maybe the side effects of the dance, or I'm feeling better, I don't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of people that have depression, they start feeling better because the medication may be working, and they stop taking it thinking I can go it alone without it, and they do that little dance. Um, you know, you don't see that often, too often with diabetics, um, and I, I keep making that simile because I think that it makes sense. Um, in your mom's case, I think that I would find a time when she's a little bit higher and a jump on it and I say you got the energy mom we all need to go to therapy together because as a family we, this is affecting all of us we're all on that roller coaster together and I want to get off this ride and you can try it then but um you can get free counseling and medications through your community services board thank you one thing that you brought up about taking a lot of energy to live with somebody with bipolar or mental illness I would say well, Caroline was alive the last two years that she was the black hole of energy. In other words, it was drama everywhere and all of our energy was spent <coughs> towards her and it just seemed to disappear inside of her. And it got to the point, and I hate to say this, but I'm again bearing my soul, that I was exhausted and pretty much gave up. Yeah. You can't give up. That's the point. I will tell you that to see a psychiatrist in most cities, it is three to four weeks, maybe two months, maybe longer. Please don't get frustrated with that. You can see a therapist probably a little bit before then. Just get the appointment. Get the appointment because what do you have now is you don't have any appointments. And when you call up because you're ready to get help, don't give up. Keep calling until you find a source. You might see your pastor, your rabbi, some counselor, but I will tell you, I do know that there's a waiting list out there. There's time to wait for, but do not let that deter you. Do it now. We were on a waiting list for that was to take six weeks to get to see the psychiatrist for the second opinion. She died after the second week. Did you have a question? Area Community Services Board as a child and adolescent therapist in the Fredericksburg Clinic. And so um, there is, it is true that there is a sliding scale fee for all services if you do not have insurance. Um, and But the free medicine is usually, for, there is some medicine that is provided samples, but most free medicine is actually provided through the Moss Free Clinic, which also has volunteer therapists. Um, and so sometimes you will see the psychiatrist at the RECSB, but then you'll have to coordinate with the Moss Free Clinic to get the medicine if you don't have the money to do so. Um, and as far as, you know, that idea of having to be on a wait list to get in to see the psychiatrist, another just good thing, again, about the emergency services provided by the RICSB, and again, it's in this entire region, Planning District 16, so all four counties around the city of Fredericksburg and the city of Fredericksburg, is that it, it's 24-hour access to the phone, and if it's after regular business hours, someone will be on the phone, and even if necessary, will go to you, um, and you can meet face-to-face -face with the person if need be. And they help to 
either provide crisis intervention to talk with you and spend an hour or two um, having that immediate um, access to therapy, and they help you um, determine whether or not you think maybe you cannot take control of your own safety and maybe having a short-term hospitalization is in your best interest. And so if you feel like you need immediate access to someone who you need to talk with, that emergency services is incredibly helpful. Um, I, I can speak at least for the city of Fredericksburg's uh, location on six, at 600 Jackson Street, that um, Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, someone is always there and you just walk in the door and you say, I need to speak to someone in emergency services and you'll be able to see someone. So that's a really great um, opportunity to make you all aware. That last question sounded like a cry for help, and here's another one with a written question. What do I do with a 24-year-old not living at home, exhibiting bipolar depressive behavior? He's self-destructing. He's lost everything except his family. How can I get him to come home so I can help him? You don't get him to come home. If he's self-destructive, and she can speak to this as well, if you're a danger to yourself, you're a danger to others, or you're unable to care for yourself, you can get an emergency petition. It's called a temporary detainment order. And if you bring them home, and you provide all the things that they need for them, then basically you accommodate them. The time to get them help, unfortunately, is when they're in their deepest, darkest moment, when they're danger to themselves, danger to others, or unable to care for yourself. You can get them temporary detained for 24 hours. That forces an evaluation. That forces them to be in an environment of safety. It's not a rubber room. But I will tell you, there's many missed opportunities. The family has sat there and said, I'll pick you up, come home, they get better, they go back on a high, they leave, and you don't know where they're at. you got to catch them when they're at the most need, is my advice. Um, only because, again, you have no proof that they need help, except when they're in, in that dire situation. If, if that son mentions suicide, you can then call the police. The police will go and will detain that person and will get that evaluation. I can just imagine how hard it must be, though, if you have a family member who maybe isn't as self-destructive as what we just described, but is definitely showing symptoms and says, for whatever reason, he or she wants to come home. And as you say, maybe you have a case where coming home, in that sense, is not what needs to happen. That must be very, very difficult. I think that's a tough love. I think that's a tough love. And again, you know, I, I think that anybody can speak to this. There's many, many times. There's many times where you're rescuing and it's going to happen again. My sister probably called me away from college. I would think, oh my God, I can't even, I lost count. I would leave nursing school and drive up to Richmond and she'd say, I want to kill myself and I'd drive all the way to Richmond from Abba Beach and she'd be uh, better by then getting dressed to go out and disco dancing. And I'd drive back going, damn, I'm going to fail that test. <laughs> um, you know, there's many times that she called and then after a while, I would just call 911 and they'd go to her house and they'd say, well, your sister's afraid you're going to kill yourself and they would evaluate her, and she got some help. But again, you know, it's very hard. We love them. We love them, but it's like that old story, the boy who cried wolf, and I think that we've all been on this panel concerned about being on suicide watch. I will tell you, I am a mental health professional, but sometimes, a lot of times, the professionals can do it better than for your family members than you can. Thank you.